Hey guys, so we left off in the middle of chapter 16 talking about the importance of pH and what it means and trying to use some of our equations to calculate pH. So um, this slide is a nice summary of those ideas. Remember that anything below 7 is considered acidic. Everything above 7 is considered basic. And so what that actually means is summarized in this really nice table from your textbook. Uh, acidic meaning below 7 pH, um, has a greater concentration of hydrogen ion. 1 times 10 to the negative 7 is kind of like your midpoint. So it can go up or down from there. So if it's acidic, it'll be higher. And um, if it's neutral, it'll be equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 7. And then if it's basic, your hydrogen ion concentration is going to be less than that. On the other side of that equation is the fact that if we have like a really high concentration of hydrogen ion, that means your hydroxide ion is going to be low, right? So they're like trading off places. When it's neutral, they're equal. When it's basic, you have low H plus but high hydroxide ion, okay? So that, that means that if you're thinking about it in terms of H plus, which usually we do, pH is inversely related to H plus concentration, right? Since it's the negative log, so that's the inverse is the negative. So in other words, H plus goes up when pH goes down, right? OH minus is proportionally related, so OH minus goes down when pH goes down, okay? And then we have these nice equations that are very helpful in doing our calculations from chapter 16, so keep those in mind. So go ahead and pause the video and try to do these, see if, if you can use those equations appropriately, and then check out how I do it. All right, so the equation I'm going to use is this is just the definition for what pH is. We're given an H plus concentration in this problem, so I just plug it into my calculator. Remembering, of course, that every calculator has a certain way you're supposed to enter the um, scientific notation. Usually it's EE or EXP. So I got 3.30. Um, remember when we're doing pHs, we always round to the second decimal place. So the sig figs are pretty easy for pH calculations. Uh, it doesn't actually really matter for our purposes how many significant digits were in the concentration. It's really just two decimal places, okay? All right, so here we have a pH is what we're given, um, which means I think probably I'm going to use the formula where H plus is equal to 10 to the negative pH. So it's just undoing this equation, right, because log is base 10, okay? So... Um, that one gets entered into your calculator with a caret usually, so it looks kind of like 10 caret, negative 1.2. Some calculators you need to use a different sign than the minus sign for that negative. So make sure you get the same answers here using your calculator so that you um, are prepared when you take your final in class. So I put it in and we get 0 0.0630957, blah, 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 blah. I'm only going to keep like two or three sig figs. We aren't going to focus really on how significant digits are calculated or used in logarithm functions. There are rules, but they're not important for us. All right, so um, three is good as a general rule of thumb. Two decimal places, though, for pH. That part's, you know, always the same. Okay, so hopefully you got roughly the same concentrations um, and pH here. Here's another one. So this one is about pOH, right? So the reason this is a pOH problem is because we're given the amount of base. So we have a few choices. Um, the easiest, I think, is to use um, the fact that pOH is defined as the same thing as pH, except you're using hydroxide ion. And then you can use the equation to convert between pH and pOH. This is not the only way to do it, but this is probably the fastest, I think. So if um, we're given NaOH, I need to remember that that's a strong base, which means that however many NaOH I have, I'm going to produce an equal amount of hydroxide. So it's going to be the negative log of that entire concentration. 
If this were weak, we would have to go through an ice table. So keep that in mind. So we got 1.6197. Now I want to tell you, uh, again, two decimal places, so I'm going to round to 1.62. Uh, I want to tell you that that a lot of the time when people skip writing this step and they just jump into this part, the math, that's a really common thing for people new to um, science to do. And it's a bad plan because a lot of the time people will get here and be like, oh, that looks like a pH, I'm done. And not really connect the fact that this is a base, so it should be a high pH, um, and that you, you've actually been using pOH, not pH here. So if pOH is 1.62. Getting to pH is pretty simple. You just subtract. All right, and so just don't um, forget to define what you're calculating before you jump into the numbers. That's a very common error there. Okay, so speaking of weak acids and bases, here is um, a couple of definitions for you. So again, a weak acid or a weak base is something that only partially falls apart when you put it in water. Um, so we end up with these equilibrium reactions. And so HA is how we represent an acid. This would be a monoprotic acid. You could also represent like, you know, diprotic or triprotic or whatever acids you end up with by going, say, like H2A. H3A, so you can show however many hydrogens you have. Um, they're always going to react with water, and you're going to get hydronium ion and the conjugate of, of HA, which will be A minus because you've taken away a positive charge. Over here, I'm just going to do one example. You can sort of use it to fill in the H3A if you'd like. The same thing happens, but you're still just doing one step at a time. So we're going to take one hydrogen and donate it to the water. Um, and that's going to leave us with one H and an A, and it's going to be a negative charge now. There, of course, is going to be another step then, because you have this hydrogen that can be lost. But you need to do it step by step, or else you can't compute anything meaningful. Um, because our Ka's are always defined by one single step of an equilibrium reaction. So for this example here, we have a Ka where hydronium times conjugate is divided by the parent acid concentration. We call this the, a Ka because it stands for acid dissociation constant. And in other words, this tells us to what degree do we form products over reactants, just like any other K value does, any other equilibrium constant. Um, so the bigger this number is, the more product you get. Um, KBs are similar, but bases don't have hydrogens to start with. They have them as the conjugate. So we just use B in place for a base. We add water to it, and you're going to, this water is going to donate a hydrogen, so you get HB. And then by donating one of those hydrogens, it leaves a hydroxide behind. So that's where this KB comes from. That's called a base dissociation constant. And it turns out these are listed in Appendix D. So if you go to your textbook and you look at Appendix D, you're going to see that the values listed there are really small. For example, for acetic acid, it's um, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. That's tiny, right? So that tells us that almost always weak acids and bases exist as the parent acid or base and not so much as the ions. Okay, that's why they're weak. So here's just a little part of Appendix D. Um, acetic acid is right at the top, and that's the Ka value. You'll notice that some acids have more than one Ka. That's because they have more than one acidic proton. Um, in my book, in my copy of my book, I have taken um, kind of in my margins and written out each equilibrium. So it's going to be like 1H produced plus H2ASO4 minus. That's going to lose another hydrogen, right? And so you can keep going. But so each part of this equilibrium represents losing um, I'm clearing the space so I can run here. It represents losing one hydrogen atom at a time. You can't lose multiple hydrogens. So here, this is 
this is minus the first hydrogen. So you would have a product of H2ASO4 minus. Here you lose the second one. So you have a product that is HS, HASO4 2 minus. And over here, you've lost the last one. So your conjugate, your product would just be ASO4 minus. That's the arsenate ion, by the way. So um, the same thing happens in a lot of cases. Ascorbic acid, for example, ascorbic acid is uh, common in our food. It's vitamin, uh, vitamin C. It actually has two protons to lose. And you can see that in the way that we draw the structure here, H2. OK, so um, you should familiarize yourself with this, this appendix. It's very handy when you're doing your homeworks and worksheets. Um, Here's an example problem. This is going to use ice tables and the K values listed in the appendix to solve it. I want you to give it a shot and then watch the next video and see, see if you've done it correctly.